Since the end of World War II, the U.S. has been dominant in the Pacific Ocean. The Soviet Union's Navy Pacific Fleet was smaller than its northern fleet, and at times, even smaller than their Baltic fleet, due to the east being very sparsely populated. With the ending of the Cold War and the collapse of the Soviet Union, the U.S. enjoyed a period of being virtually, completely unchallenged in the Pacific. However, that is starting to change, and that change is coming rapidly with the rise of China. Before we continue, I'd like to go over our sponsor, World of Warships. This game is incredible, and right up my alley, and almost certainly yours since you're watching this. With extremely detailed ships throughout history, and intense gameplay, what's not to love? World of Warships is a game you have to try out if you're interested in my content. It goes hand in hand. Want to play as a battleship like the USS Iowa? They got it, and many more. The attention to detail is astounding, and with that much work put into making the game, it certainly shows in the quality. World of Warships is a strategic action game. Some have even called it the thinking man's action game. You can spend hours a day just coming up with new strategies to play and win. With competitive gameplay and constantly updated new missions, they'll be coming back to World of Warships day after day. And if you sign up with my link, not only will you be helping support my channel, but it'll also get you perks such as 700 doubloons, 1 million credit, 7 days of premium account time, and 2 premium ships. Right now, there's no better time to get into World of Warships than today. So go check them out and use that link down in the description. You won't be disappointed. In the last 20 years, China has gone from basically having an old, outdated, relatively insignificant navy with little to no ability to project power out into the Pacific Ocean to being on the verge of operating a massive blue water navy, complete with multiple aircraft carriers. On the other hand, the US has, in some way, been scaling back in its naval capabilities. The US currently operates one less aircraft carrier than it did 20 years ago, and that number will likely further decline over the next few years. They have more destroyers now than they did, but less cruisers, zero frigates, less submarines, and less amphibious and auxiliary ships. On top of that, the US borders two major oceans, the Pacific and the Atlantic, not to mention operations in other places around the world while China's only border is the Pacific, where it can dedicate its entire fleet. China's aircraft carriers have received the most attention. With two operational right now, they have no plans to stop. They already have plans for more and bigger carriers, including supercarriers rivaling that of the US. These carriers are being escorted in a similar fashion to the US by several other warships. They are constructing new and more capable destroyers, frigates, and corvettes in incredible numbers. Most of these ships are not designed just to patrol the coastal waters. They are deep ocean vessels which will operate further out into the Pacific Ocean and beyond. China is rapidly growing into a superpower, and with it, a superpower's military. They have already built up an incredible number of both ballistic and cruise missiles. And like the US, they are deploying land attack cruise missiles to their warships. The Type 55 destroyer, for example, is reported to be armed with dozens of CJ-10 cruise missiles which are similar in range, warhead size, and capability to the American Tomahawk. In the next few years, these ships could be operating in the Eastern Pacific, just as US ships often operate off the coast of China. The US will no longer have the ability to operate in the Pacific uncontested. To attempt to counter this, the US is going to have to change tactics. One big one might be defending the homeland. The continental US has been relatively safe for decades from attack. But with Chinese ships being armed with long-range cruise missiles, that will change. Like Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and dozens of others who face the threat of US cruise missiles, the US may need to set up their own air defense sites. As you look through satellite imagery of places like China, you'll find hundreds of surface-to-air missile sites to protect their territory from aircraft and cruise missiles. In the early Cold War, the US had hundreds of Nike missiles stationed across the US defending major cities and important military and government sites. So this is something the US might need to do again. The US already has interceptor aircraft stationed at air bases inside the US, which can and have reacted to possible aerial threats, such as when Russia sends a Tu-95 bomber toward the US, but their ability is limited. It takes time to not only detect the threat, but identify it as potentially hostile, alert the nearest base, ready pilots and their aircraft, then load weapons and fuel and take off. A surface-to-air missile system can react much quicker, as it only needs to detect the threat, identify it as hostile, and launch. 
The one thing China does not have going for it is its neighbors. In terms of the Pacific, China is nearly surrounded by countries which are either friendly or direct allies of the US. Countries like South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and to a lesser extent, the Philippines and Vietnam. These countries form a wall, boxing China in from the rest of the Pacific Ocean. This makes getting ships and submarines out into the Pacific, without being noticed, very difficult. In the event of a war, any Chinese ships which do make it past out into the Pacific would require resupply ships to sustain them, and these would be incredibly vulnerable to attack. So, in order to sustain its warships operating and fighting in the Pacific, it would almost certainly require them to first attack one of these countries. Taiwan has always been at the center of attention when it comes to China. The relationship between China and Taiwan is an interesting one. Both claim to be the true China, and that the other is just occupied territory. Shortly after World War II, China fought a civil war. The Communist Party, led by Mao Zedong, won, with the Nationalist Party, led by Chiang Kai-shek, retreating to Taiwan, where it has remained ever since. Both sides have an interest in reclaiming the other, similar in a sense to North and South Korea, which was also once a single nation, separated after World War II. With China being the much larger and more stronger country, and growing stronger every year, it could potentially retake Taiwan, which in turn would give China unfettered access into the rest of the Pacific. A different option for China is to make new friends. The Philippines was considered an ally for the US for decades, hosting US military bases, but that has changed. They have began to drift closer to China, although their relationship is not exactly perfect. China's militarization of the South China Sea has been a major point of contention, as it's right off the coast of the Philippines. There have also been several events that have increased tensions between the two, such as claims of China sinking Filipino fishing boats. Another issue for China is Vietnam. This is another allegiance that has shifted in the past several decades. During the Vietnam War, China was a major ally of Vietnam fighting against the United States. But what a lot of people don't know is that shortly after the war, the relationship soured, and China and Vietnam fought a war against each other. And today, the US and Vietnam have relatively good relations, with even several US naval ships and an aircraft carrier visiting a Vietnamese port in a friendly visit, and participating together during RIMPAC. So, with China growing rapidly, the US will no longer be the sole superpower in the Pacific. At the same time, China has many hurdles to overcome themselves before they can fully make that a reality.